Greetings and welcome to another episode of Caring for You with me, Dr. Terence Joe. Today we're going to look at an issue that has become the interest of the world, and that is the coronavirus or COVID-19. This virus, as we know, began in Wuhan province in China and has subsequently spread throughout the world. I think it was at the end of 2019 that the virus was finally detected. And we are just in March and over 50 countries worldwide is already affected, are already affected. The World Health Organization is at the point where they might declare the coronavirus or COVID-19 a pandemic which means it has spread throughout the world. It is now here in the Americas, in North America, Central America, South America, and even in our backyard in St. Martin and St. Bats. And the World Health Organization and slash PAHO has designated our country, St. Kitts and Nevis, to be at the very high risk level to have the coronavirus. And therefore, what can we do as individuals, as communities, as a country, as a region to really help to prevent the spread of this virus and to protect our health? In the first place, I encourage us to practice good hygiene. What does that mean? It entails washing your hands with soap and water, or you can even use a sanitizer with a very high percentage of alcohol content. But washing hands with soap is always best. I would also advise that you don't sneeze into your hand like this, but you sneeze into your flex elbow like this, so that your hand would not become contaminated with the virus and be easily um, spread. I would also um, encourage us to stay away from those who have respiratory symptoms such as cough, sneezing, runny nose, um, or have viral illnesses and manifest with fever. Or if ourselves are uh, infected, that we would stay away um, from persons and use a mask to prevent us from spreading uh, the virus. One of the masks that is popularly um, use is the N95. So you can pick that up at a drug store. <clears throat> it is a specific mask to prevent the spread. However, research has shown that somebody using the mask to prevent themselves from catching the virus, um, that mask uh, may not work in that instance, but it works best to prevent a person who is sick from giving the disease. And then we have to look also after our general health which means that we have to um, stay hydrated eat plenty of fruits vegetables healthy food and stay in good condition generally and if we have any underlying illnesses such as diabetes hypertension heart disease and so forth we try our best to keep those under control additionally we must uh, try to prevent um, from touching surfaces and touching our faces and eyes and mouth and so forth because that is another way through the fecal occult route that we can transmit the uh, corona virus. Um, some people has resorted to not shaking hands but doing a, a fist uh, pump, bump as they call it. In the same case in the Caribbean we call it adapts um, a bow to, to, to help to prevent the contact with the surface of the palm so as to limit or decrease the opportunity um, to spread um, the virus. And these basic things can help tremendously in preventing the spread of not only the coronavirus but other types of viruses. Additionally, for those who would have traveled to areas that has the areas that have the virus, I would encourage them to um, if they have any um, symptoms, to report the symptoms as quickly as possible to their doctor or to their clinic or, or to the health ministry so that they can be attended to in terms of getting quarantine and if treatment need, more treatment is needed, that they can get the necessary um, um, treatment. 
and that self quarantine is important because it means you would not be in contact with your family members or others who would be susceptible to catching um, the infection and those things can can also help now once somebody gets the virus what are the symptoms the symptoms can manifest themselves as a common cold or flu cough runny nose fever but they can also develop shortness of breath which uh, really implies that the lungs are infected and most people who end up with complications from the coronavirus end up with respiratory complications that's where the lungs are infected and cannot carry out their function and then they can die from respiratory failure and so once you realize these symptoms are coming on you really should contact your healthcare provider so that you can be um, taken care of but what are the risk factors for developing these complications persons who have diabetes persons who have hypertension underlying conditions such as asthma or even cancers and obesity i think also would play uh, a role in making people more susceptible to the complications and that is why our general health is important but we know that most people who become infected with coronavirus that they would have mild symptoms only five percent of a population um, will become infected based on current um, statistics and five percent of our population we can calculate that that would be um, a number of thousands and then of that we expect a certain percentage to become complicated and those who become complicated some will end up on the vent and a matter of fact in six the calculation is maybe 165 persons can develop those complications and need a respirator a ventilator a machine to breathe for you and therefore uh, that person would need to be in an ICU setting and they are best treated by a pulmonologist who is a lung doctor and an intensivist who is a doctor trained in intensive care and in addition because this is an infectious disease it would best also to consult an infectious disease um, specialist and uh, these can help us um, also to deal with the coronavirus but apart from that what can we do at the country level I think at the country level one we need to educate our people the Ministry of Health would um, disseminate information and even doctors would disseminate information I myself would create some documents so I can circulate to my patients and in the country and whole so that people can become educated about this a constant update updates and information these are important to help to deal with dealing to help to deal with the coronavirus but once the people become educated what else can be do, done by the country at the border we need to have good surveillance at the border make sure that we are identifying those who are high risk and having our immigration officers trained, our custom officers trained, and have healthcare professionals at the border to deal with border health so that if we find anybody coming through with symptoms and they are suspicious, they can be quarantined almost immediately and be separated from the rest of the population. And so I encourage um, a lot of work really at the, at the border. I also encourage us to um, collaborate with other countries. My suggestion is that we can collaborate with a country like Cuba. Cuba has tremendous experience in dealing with infectious diseases. For example, during the Ebola um, crisis, Cuba would have sent uh, thousands of healthcare professionals and they would have successfully helped to stop the spread of Ebola. And Cuba has the specialists that can assist us, such as the lung specialists and the intensive care specialists and the infectious disease specialists, so that our health care providers can be supported by these specialists, which we don't have in our country um, at this time. And I think that if we use basic common sense, we are properly educated, of course, we can help to stop the coronavirus. But this continues to be a saga. Many of us are frightened. We have reason to be. But I ask for calm and for us not to panic, but to become educated and do what is necessary 
and be prudent to make sure that we stem the spread of this coronavirus. And so together with all hands on deck, we will come through this as we have come through other things. Thank you for joining me, Dr. Terence Joe, for this episode of Caring for You. Thank <laughs> you.